Okay, welcome to the Beta Podcast. Here in this episode, I'm joined by Bisman Deo. Is that how I pronounce yeah, it correctly? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Um, so, before uh, we get into anything, I'm going to give you a quick introduction mm. uh, through these long list of accolades. Okay. <laughs> so, we, you are a Forbes 30 Under 30 honoree, an inventor, public speaker, startup founder, women's rights activist. Yeah. Uh, you're featuring a new entrepreneurial book and a second year ePay student, as I've recently just learned, yeah. um, at work. That's yeah. a lot to swallow. So um, before we get into the details of all of that, I just want to ask you, like, let's hear from the mm-hmm. beginning. So right. where did you grow up? And right. yeah, it's just yeah. Um, so thank you for the introduction. That's okay. um, so I basically grew up in the UK. So I had my foundation years in the UK. Grew up here. And then later on, my parents decided it was time to move back to India. So then I went back and, um, you know, I was, um, I'm still living in Chandigarh, so my parents are there. Mm-hmm. And then I keep shuttling back and forth. Yeah. Uh, so that's where I grew up. But then... How um, old were you when you um, went oh, back? Oh, I there? was 11 years old when I went back. Yeah. So I still have a lot of memories um, of Teletubbies and Tweenies. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's basically where I grew up. Awesome. So... Mm-hmm. So your parents, uh, when did they immigrate over to the UK and what was that? Yeah. Was that because of a career or...? Uh, yeah, so my dad uh, was working, is still working in the UK at that time, mm-hmm. so that's when we moved here. Awesome. So let's move on then to sort of, so, so when you were in school. Yeah. So what were, your, what were you like during school? Uh, what were yeah. your interests and yeah. how that I was Okay, so very honestly, in school, I was a very annoying kid, uh, (laughs) extremely inquisitive, the kind of kid that you really don't want to be around because she asks way too many questions for comfort. But I think that's kind of where, um, you know, curiosity feeds into Mm. innovation is what I feel. And that's where I started asking questions and started getting to be interested in a lot of things. Yeah. So, yeah, I was basically all in all very curious. So, so this was, um, so you just left, obviously, if you were 11, you left yeah. the UK. Yeah. Um, and how did you find that transition when you were going yeah. from, from a UK like uh-huh. a primary education to mm-hmm. secondary education in India? Was yeah. it very different or? Yeah, I think in the beginning I did find it a little hard to settle in, mm. but I was very fortunate enough to go to a great school in Jandigarh. And um, they had a very similar system as compared to the UK as well. But obviously, yeah. I had to work like 10 times harder because I think, you know, primary education over here was, is very laid back. I loved creative writing. But over there, it's kind of like very hardcore, you know, mathematics and science. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely. I found the transition hard. But then later on, you know, I kind of immersed into the system really nicely. And um, I really have to credit all kind of my work ethics to the Indian schooling system, at least. Mm. So, yeah. So did you have particular teachers that influenced you or yeah. was it like your friends, peers? Yeah, I think it was just an overall mix really because yeah. firstly the environment is really competitive so it's kind of like, you know, you, someone's, you know, kind of always there to push you on and I think my teachers as well having that safety net to fall back into and, you know, um, I had a few teachers on the way that, you know, I always had so many ideas and I could go and discuss it with them so that was really something which kind of got me started off. Mm. So you had a very like supportive background yeah. at school then. And yeah. So so school, all in all, uh, when you went back to India, was actually a pretty positive experience. Yeah, definitely. Was, so do you think um, leading on from that, mm-hmm. oh, I've just lost my th- train of thought. No <laughs> no, it's all it's all good. Um, I just had a mind blank. Don't worry about it. it happens to me all the time. Um, yeah. So um, was it the so the system you just finished school yeah. and um, you were coming back to the UK. Yeah. Um, And do you think as well, back in school, this Mm -hmm. competitiveness, that's what I was going to talk about, competitiveness. Yeah. um, Has this competitiveness carried on throughout? Do you actually find yourself, even though you're in a very supportive environment of other people, Mm -hmm. do you instinctively in the back of your mind still feel very competitive against everyone else? Yeah, um, I do. I think in my initial years, that competitiveness was always in the form of marks. Mm. Um, right now, it's you know I think it will be a lie to say that no, I'm I'm not competitive at all. Or, but for that matter of fact, quite a lot of people. Yeah. But right now, I think that competitiveness competitiveness has kind of turned into more of a comfort where I'm doing what I have to instead of looking at what other people are doing. Yeah. Because I'm enjoying what I'm doing, and you know, um, not many people get the chance or experiences that I do, and I'm very grateful. So I think that comfort has kind of seeped in as well. But at the same time, it's not satisfaction. Mm. because I think that's where you kind of stop. You get comfortable. So you get very comfortable. Yeah. So this is a good kind of comfort and yeah. not a <laughs> slagging off kind of yeah, comfort. Okay. Yeah. 
So um, when you were at home and also yeah. now, yeah. have your parents been a, yeah. a big impact on you? Are they very yeah. supportive? Have they been tough yeah. on you? Yeah, um, oh, definitely. I think I have to really give everything that I am today to my parents mm. um, because it's so important, at least the way that I see it, um, that when you have a very strong support system back at home, it does translate onto the workplace as well because you know you're yeah. backed all the time. And you know, going back to you know the building material, almost blew up my mum's kitchen, but she was okay with it. So, so, so let, let's yeah. talk about that actually. Yeah. So, um, what you're credited for, and is, did, mm -hmm. is this what recognised you in Forbes mainly? Yeah. And so, yeah. do you want to talk about actually what it what uh, yeah. you got recognised for in Forbes and how yeah. it actually came about? Yeah, sure. Um, so it's taking you back to when I was 15. Yeah. Um, I was so I have a farmhouse in India, northern India, and I was there with my dad, and we were taking a stroll, and it was harvesting season. And you know, I kind of faced this problem where I was literally choking up because of the smoke. Mm. And like I told you, I was extremely inquisitive, and I started asking my dad these multiple series of questions about you know why is there so much smoke? What's going on? Why are they so? What happens is when rice is harvested, there's a lot of stubble left behind, and the farmers don't have anything have any use of it so they end up burning the stubble so it's basically waste material which renders the top layer of soil infertile as well mm. and I went back and researched and it turns out that that you know the rice waste the rice waste and straw has great properties like great content of silica making it waterproof and termite resistant and that's kind of you know something sparked and I was like you know this is this is great mm. so they're throwing it away it's a great product to be you know it could be turned into so many things um, and you know, my, I, I'm very grateful to my mum for providing me with all the support. And um, you know, I'm not disowned just yet. Um, so yeah, so I went back and I did all the experimentation. And that's the point in time I came up with Greenwood, which is a sustainable building material, which is used to provide affordable housing to the poor people um, and underprivileged. So that's kind of where the journey started from. And, you know, rippling in, um, I had um, the editor of Forbes Asia write an article about me, about my journey. And then later on, um, you know, I think we'll talk about networking later into the series. Um, you know, that's when later on she was the one that went and recommended me onto the Forbes. 30 under 30 list yeah. and that's how I made it there. Wow so let's talk about the experimentation yeah. process of that. Yeah. How long is this journey uh, yeah. of, of the building material and the development uh -huh. of that? How many times did you fail and how did you yeah. pivot back from yeah. all those sort of things? Oh I think, I think I'm still, I'm still mm. on that journey really and it's been about four years now. Mm. Um, it was basically starting off with a very fundamental core concept and then later on discovering different elements of it and putting it all together. And you don't stop, you know, when you when you think you've got it, that's a prototype, but you have to, I think I went through tons of prototypes to get to mm. something which I think is, you know, okay right now. And I think also you change your prototypes according to the environment you're in, because changing needs of, you know, you, I want, and now at this point in time, I want to lower the carbon footprint of the product. That's also because of the coming in of, you know, talks about sustainability, etc. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's basically how it went. And, yeah. Are you, are you using the material today then? Yeah. Is it being used in practice? And can you talk about um, maybe the yes. scale of what's going on? Yeah, so not as of now, because um, I'm juggling too many things. <laughs> yeah. So, um, But definitely, I think about a few years down the line, I'd want to produce it commercially. I was approached by a lot of people. Um, from around the world, but you know, I didn't really want to give it up to someone mm. because it's literally like my baby yeah. because I've seen it grow. The secret formula, like. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, with with that creating that, that material as well, yeah. did you? Well, I'm facing all these people coming up and being like, yeah. Were they were they wanting to buy buy what you were doing yeah. and things like that? So, did yeah. you have to create some sort of um, property pr uh, protection? Yeah. So, have you patented yeah. the product? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's patent yeah. pending. Um, but I did, you know, I think because I was. I I was so young and naive and lots of people that are really into the construction world mm. they did approach me thinking it's extremely easy to get to this child and yeah. just be like you know um, so age was definitely a deterrent at that point in time but I think when you know what you're doing and you know what you want and you've kind of surveyed the market and mm. you know you not you know the pros cons and ins and outs of it so I did not you know kind of go ahead and just sell off the idea to someone yeah. else 
So has, has anyone, any other competitors sort of tried to take a lead on yeah. your kind of work? Have you noticed anything going um, on in the environment there? I, I actually, um, not what I'm doing in, in particular, not exactly, but yeah. I, I've seen a huge shift in like sustainable building materials in general. Yeah. Um, so like I think I came across an article with someone trying to do something with wheat and yeah, but so you know, good for them. Yeah, I think yeah. it, it's obviously great to just so long as the world is progressing in this good direction, we're mm. good. Yeah. So, so you didn't ever think of, um, especially when you're coming to university and you've got all yeah. these other things going on, yeah. um, ever think of like licensing the material to yeah. companies or things like that? Mm -hmm. um, um, not as of yet, I mm. would uh, think because. I'm, I love innovation, I love creating all the time and right now I'm in the phase where I'm trying to, as I said, lower the carbon footprint yeah. and I want to see where I can take it before licensing it out and doing all those things. Brilliant. So, um, so building material as well, so when mm -hmm. did you see the need for a building material for houses yeah. and specifically like how did you apply it? Have you made mm -hmm. uh, mock-up houses or yeah. have using the materials can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that yeah um so again going back to that day that i took a walk with my dad um so i, I so basically nomads build their houses out of just plain straw in india um you know the this I've, i'd seen that structure mm. and that's somewhere where i linked two and two together and said you know they could be living in much better houses not just like that because with natural calamity they come collapsing down yeah so it stemmed from not business but doing good and then later on you know kind of realized that yes there was a market for the same and um, yeah I've experimented with the you know like literally a four by four piece and seeing how it went on to become yeah I definitely I did like a little structure out mm. of it um, trying to come up with walls that are like basically two boards and sandwich you know material in between done all of that stuff and it's been so much fun along the way so yeah and do you have anyone else working with you on yeah. it? So your parents, have you yeah. got friends? Yeah, I think um, I, I love taking things on solo and I go all in. Uh, but definitely, I think my dad definitely helps me along the way mm. with anything and everything I need, including finances. <laughs> yeah. so, so how much, I mean, you don't have to disclose, but how, yeah. how much investment has it taken? Has it taken mm -hmm. a lot of resources for you to do yeah. the research? And Actually, it's very surprising, not, not a lot, because I was very fortunate enough to, um, so this is the next thread to the, to the story, mm -hmm. wherein I entered a competition called the uh, Junior Achievement Social Innovation Relay. And that was a competition which kind of really changed the way I thought and the course of my life, basically. Yeah. Um, so just to give you a little bit about the competition in general, it's a competition which uh, motivates high school students to come up with innovative business concepts that also benefit the society. And I came across this and I was like, this is perfect because I have an idea and you know I should enter. Yeah. And along the way, um, there were a lot of mentors that were assigned to us. So there were multiple steps and stages. It was about a three-month grueling, you know, process. And um, along the way, I did, you know, receive a lot of great advice from people in Singapore and all across the world. And uh, you know, we had like concept papers, video presentations, etc. And then, um, you know, very fortunately, I'd won the competition among forty-three thousand students, and that kind of got me onto the path of innovation. That's that competitiveness, beating 43 other, yeah. <laughs> 43,000 other 43, students. Wow. Numbers are important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I suppose let's let's continue the story yeah. from there. Then. Yeah. So you're, you're making this material, yeah. being recognised in Forbes. Yeah. Um, where was your next sort of turn in the story? What was mm -hmm. the, the next thing that came up? Yeah, so, um, so Forbes 30 Under 30 came much later, actually, in oh, okay. just last yeah. year. Um, but then what happened from there on was I was given a chance to go to a conference in Tallinn, Estonia. And that was an innovation con a conference where 120 other entrepreneurs came together to discuss the ideas that they had. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a great turning point. I'm very closely associated with Junior Achievement. It's an organization and it's absolutely amazing and such a hub for young talent, I would say. So that's kind of where I, you know, went into and definitely being covered a lot, in fact, got me into, you know, I started speaking at conferences, I started talking about innovation and sustainability. Mm. So that's where my journey towards, you know, speaking in conferences, attending them. I'm an absolute conference geek. I love going to conferences because I think that's where you meet amazing people and make mm. amazing connections. I agree with that. I mean, the yeah. very few conferences that I've gone to have actually yeah. been absolutely worth it. Definitely. And the people that you meet uh, just through random connections so work. Good, so yeah. I suppose that's one thing like viewers watching can take away. It's like, yeah. 
take advantage of those opportunities. I mean, yeah, I agree. Um, in the podcast before this with Tim mm-hmm. and Ambrose, they both met um, at a conference that Tim was actually uh-huh. speaking at. Uh-huh. Um, and it was just, you know, it's crazy yeah. how these things can happen when you're in a room full of like-minded people. Yeah. Um, so as well speaking about conferences then mm-hmm. how how did um, obviously you were very inquisitive from a young age but mm-hmm. what else gave you the confidence for when it was whether it's public speaking yeah. and, and just you know putting mm-hmm. yourself out there and meeting yeah. these people so um, my first conference was when I was 15 and it, it I look back at it and I'm like what am I doing <laughs> if this is not the way to go but um, I was very intimidated, in fact, by... I, I was the youngest and still sometimes am the youngest at certain conferences mm. I go to. And, um, you know, being a female yet again, that somewhat is a deterrent sometimes when you're dealing with these people that are so, like, they've been in their field for so long. And, uh, you know, I kind of stepped back, really, when yeah. I was, like, 15, 16. I was having great doubts about that. But then I realized that, if again, if you know what you're doing and you believe in yourself and you have great ideas and you really want the world to know, you know, age and gender, it's literally, it doesn't matter. So I went and, you know, after attending so many, I think that's when you kind of develop the confidence and meeting amazing people that wanted to listen to me and having that confidence that I do have something to give to people. Um, Yet again, what really gave me the confidence was the fact that, you know, I was this this really inquisitive person who had business cards when I was 15. And, you know, I, I wasn't scared to go and give my yeah. business card to someone. And then that kind of, you know, stuck in their head that, she, you know, she, she was young and you just approach someone. So I think something that I would really want, you know, everyone watching today to take away is not to be scared and just do what you have to, really.